But it's a thrill for everyone in town to see the Sparrows and their team. And it's something special to banker Bill Brown and the rest of the Zeering community. And this is about what it's amounted to. Everybody's real proud of Dick. He's done a real job in working on this thing. And uh, I don't know how much self-confidence that he has, but it's just been amazing to me, as I'm sure it has been to everybody else, to watch this. The honor of recreating Dick Posey's 40-horse hitch has not been without a challenge. But Dick is confident in both his team and his helpers. Well, we found a lot of problems when we got off the gravel and off the farm and on the streets up here today. We were getting a little slack and some adjustments aren't right. I've got some new line parts coming that we decided to change two weeks ago that are going to help us immensely in this situation. I'm, oh, I'm real happy. This is only the first, last of May and we've got uh, another month to go and and I think they're working as well as to be expected. Dick has spent the greater part of the past year in preparation, assembly, and training of both men and horses, all in preparation for the great circus parade. June 27th. One week before the big parade, Sparrow's team of men and horses are ready. Now it's time to load the harnesses, the horses, families and crew, and head the caravan to Milwaukee to the city's lakefront showground. Getting there is no easy task. Three semi-trailers and one flatbed truck are needed to tote 46 Belgians, 11 outrider horses, one cart horse, and of course the one pony for the Sparrow girls. horses are not the only ones in the circus parade. Over 700 will take part, some from as far away as California and Canada. It's a kind of unofficial horseman's convention. The Sparrow's horses, as well as the others, will be quartered under tents. It all begins to take shape. The lakefront begins to resemble a showground. Mules, ponies, all kinds of circus wagons, and finally the historic old circus wagons themselves, strapped aboard the old Milwaukee special train, which has brought the wagons from their permanent home at the Circus World Museum in Baraboo, Wisconsin, the birthplace of the American circus. Now it is time for Dick Sparrow to get the horses accustomed to real crowds and unfamiliar city noises. He rotates the two teams of 20 horses each. He practices the smaller hitches, and the public gets its first look at part of the 40. There are plenty of attractions at the showgrounds, live circus entertainment, animal acts, and plenty of familiar circus sounds and circus smells, sawdust, roasted peanuts, and popcorn. But this year's main attraction is Dick Sparrow and his 40-horse hitch, and the crowds gather around the tent eagerly awaiting Sparrow and his magnificent Belgian. Others line the showground street for pictures of Dick and his crew putting the 20 horses through their paces. It is parade day, and the weather is ideal for this ninth annual Circus Day Parade. Sunny skies and a cool breeze blowing off Lake Michigan. For Chappy Fox, this is an emotional moment, awaiting the arrival of the 40-horse hitch, the most spectacular event in this year's Circus Parade. It will be the last parade he will ever direct, for Fox has disclosed earlier that he will leave Wisconsin to head the new Circus Town Project, 
near Orlando, Florida. In recreating his authentic circus parades, Chappie Fox has amassed the world's largest collection of circus wagons. Many were once abandoned or junked, but Fox has reassembled and restored these wagons, not only for historical display, but rebuilt them to once again rattle along city streets. It is a parade complete with elephants and marching bands, all outfitted in hand-sewn costumes. The circus parade itself represents a roll call of great circuses, wagons from circuses that marched through American and British cities 55 to 85 years ago. Names like Wallace, Hagenbach, Poor Paw, Sir Robert Fawcett, and of course the Ringling Brothers. As others leave the showground, Dick's crew of Yellow Hats begin the task of preparing the 40 Belgians, with their handsome black, orange, and gold harnesses, especially made for them by skilled Iowa Amish craftsmen. As the horses are led to parade position, one gets some idea at the tremendous hitching puzzle that faced Dick from the beginning. Dick's initial challenge was figuring out how to hitch up the 40. None of the original drivers had ever explained how they managed it. That left Sparrow with only a few fuzzy old still photographs showing the 40 in action. I knew that in order to control these horses, he had a few gimmicks or buck straps involved in it, but I couldn't see any pictures. There was no description of these things. Very amusingly, I devised a system of my own through trial and error and had to remake about $200 of the harness. And after I got through and examining an old photograph, some straps that I couldn't determine where they went or what they'd done, but I could see them, look now to me as though they are exactly as Jake Posey had them in his 1903 hitch. At long last, the 40s time has come. Time to test driver, horses, and design over Milwaukee's three and a half mile parade route. The horses are hitched and waiting. Outriders take their positions to the front and sides of the hitch. They will be the first to react should any problems arise. Before climbing aboard, Dick and Paul Sparrow make last minute checks. The 40 will pull one of the Circus Museum's most prized wagons, the five-ton Columbia Bandwagon, built for the Barnum and Bailey Circus back in 1897. Then, with lines in hand, Dick barks out his now familiar command. Move them out! 68 years after Jake Posey predicted it would never be attempted again, the 40 is back. Excitement gradually builds as the Sparrow entry comes thundering along. No one knew at the moment what an important part Dick's 17-year-old son Paul would play in the success of the 40. Well, the parade in Milwaukee went very well. I had one outrider horse that come uncorked a little about the time we got to the TV cameras, but he quieted back down. Uh, he's been there last year. I don't know why he bothered this year. That horse is for you. As the hitch reaches national television cameras, just opposite the reviewing stand, Dick suddenly, and if on cue, hands the ten-line reins to Paul. Well, it just kind of hit me by surprise that Dad would uh, just hand him to me when we were in such an important part where we didn't want to blow it. It just made me tingle inside and really made me feel important or something. It just gave me a great feeling on life. The horses pulled a little harder on the lines than what we thought they would. When they hit all the people, they kind of geared up a little bit. They worked me over pretty hard in the, on my arms about the first four blocks or five. And uh, consequently, Paul drove well, quite a lot over half the parade. And he drove most all the straightaways and all the easy corners, and I got down to the point I was just driving the hard corners. Returning to the showgrounds after its triumphant performance, the 40 is met by Chappie Fox, so overjoyed that he leads the remaining crew members in a cheer.
Knox tells Dick Sparrow that seeing the 40 recreated just as Jake Posey did it 68 years ago was his dream come true. The following morning, after a full evening of celebrating, the Sparrow crew is up and ready for the task at hand of loading horses and equipment for their return trip to Zering, Iowa. But before the summer is over, the crew will perform again before the National Belgian Horse Show in Davenport, Iowa, and later at the Illinois State Fair in Springfield, Illinois. Dick brings his famous 40-horse hitch back to Zering, Iowa, to be part of their Labor Day celebration. Just about every one of the 500 Zering residents had a hand in the 40, and they take special pride in preparing for the 40's homecoming. For Dick Sparrow, it is an opportunity to repay his home community. It's the largest, most continuous one-day outdoor show in Iowa. It's also unique in the fact that it supports itself through gated missions and doesn't have sponsors from various merchants. It's the only one in Iowa that operates on that principle, and we've done it for 27 years. The community now has taken over this show and enlarged it, made it into a tractor pull on a Sunday, a Queen's contest, fireworks, large carnival, and a parade. The parade's been running about 20 years. And uh, we thought it'd be wonderful to come back to Zering as more or less a thank you to the community. And also the community is very proud of this because they've all taken a part in it. And what better place to display it than at Zering? The drawing power of the 40 is now evident. Zering, Iowa swells to 50,000 people by parade time. Dick Sparrow even adds some showman touches to his performance, stopping the teams along the way, then commanding the horses to back up the circus wagon they are pulling. Trots the 40 for short distances. The 40 has traveled a long road from the muddy, rain-soaked Iowa fields to city streets of Milwaukee, along with side trips to Davenport, Iowa, and Springfield, Illinois. The 40 has brought a family and a small community closer together, and it has brought joy to those who have come to associate circus extravaganzas with history books and old photographs. Dick Sparrow has made the 40 live again. 68 years will not elapse before the next 40 hitch performance. The 40 is back all right, back to stay.